Here at the Conservation Biology Institute, we save species from all over the world. This is a special place. It's not like all the horse farms that are all around it in the Shenandoah Valley in Virginia. Everybody. Everybody in here, huh? Hi, ladies. How are you doing this morning, Sherry? Every morning I come to work with some of the rarest species in the world. All of the animals here are either endangered or extinct in the wild. Many times, not that much is known about them. I might be the, the person that knows the most about them in this country because I am the one that's worked with them the most. Are you ready for some breakfast, hmm? What did you do to your bunk feeders? They're supposed to be in a line. Scimitar horned oryx are from North Africa. They are extinct in the wild. Dama gazelle are from North Africa. There are less than 300 of them left in the wild. Elves deer are native to Burma and Thailand, and there are less than 2,000 of those left in the wild. In the years that I've worked here, I've probably seen 45 or 50 births. Of all of those births, probably Christine the Przewalski's horse is one of the most special. Christine is the first Przewalski horse born through artificial insemination ever, so it was very important that, that she was successful. Christine's birth involved 21 days of monitoring her mother 24-7 from the back of a van parked outside the barn, and she had her on a Friday evening at about 9.15, and she had her in 10 minutes before I could even call the vet staff and say, she's having it. It was on the ground. One of my first calls was to Buddha, the scientist that uh, did the artificial insemination that created Christine. As soon as I saw Dolores' number, I was saying, did it happen? And she said, yes, she's here and doing well. I don't show much emotions, but that day I did show. Uh, it was beautiful. Anytime you're working with endangered species, the goal is to have a healthy, self-sustaining population. Our first line of defense is natural reproduction. When natural breeding fails, artificial insemination comes to rescue. The Schwalski's horse went extinct in the wild in the late 60s. Thanks to animals in zoos that were as part of the breeding program, we've been able to grow the population and reintroduce them in Mongolia. The Schwalski's horse is the only truly wild horse left in the world. Uh, they were never domesticated. Nobody ever put a halter on them. They've not been ridden. They're much more intense. Like if they're gonna have a reaction, it's sort of an all or nothing. Their behavior is still very, very herd-oriented. They really like to stick together in a group. They don't like being by themselves. When I work with Christine, I keep in the back of my mind that she is a wild animal. She needs to be part of a, a herd, so I, I treat her like I do the rest of the herd. Christine's a typical yearling. She's very curious, likes to use her mouth to kind of like check everything out, taste it. And she's pretty much the darling of the herd. Christine will never see Mongolia. She wouldn't know how to survive out in the wild, but she is very genetically important to the species. The current estimate of uh, wild Schwalski horse is about 500 animals. The success we have had in artificial insemination is just a starting point for our ability to breed these animals. It may be possible in the near future to breed a mare in Mongolia using a stallion in Virginia without moving that stallion from here. Christine, um, she, she keeps reminding me of what it's going to look like in the future. And we hope that we can repeat a lot of this to help preserve the species for generations to come. <laughs>